Lek and Greg Vegan Camp, the 1st of December 2022! The Roselle harvest has started! Sticky rice dessert, like a sweet uh, bread, sticky bread on the pan, giving to Na Tong Bai because Na Tong Bai is giving us a lot of pakatam. Fabian helped us a lot with uh, trimming the bamboo forest, so now it's easier to get the fresh shoots to eat, and also it's much easier to see if there are any rats hiding or any other so our rat problem has minimized to a minimum it's cool Lek has been trimming the chaya fence because the papaya tree over there fell down and also trimmed around here new shoots of chaya can come and we can use it for eating and drying and very sad thing is that this papaya tree fell down we need to cut it. Many of the papayas have been saved. Saved in the fridge with banana leaves. I remember walking on this same street talking about that the house over there at the vegan camp has been, was being built about six years ago. Time flies. Wow. Well, this is Pakadam in Natong Bai Suan. Suan Ban. The house garden of Auntie Tong Bai. More than uh, any human can eat. Pakatam harvested into a green bag of love. The storage room is now very bulletproof. We even enforced it with metal sheets under the ground here now. And the sheets on the top, spe special sheets on the top or also holding ground seems and it's just so nice to be free of, of uh, rodents right now and not only the rodents it's also the geckos the tokai geckos they if they run around here uh, in the, during the night if people are sleeping around they make a lot of noise like in the night and it's just really not nice so if you can seal your storage rooms completely or almost completely they <clears throat> There should be some air circulation, of course, but otherwise try to keep your buildings super tight so there are not no no areas where where rodents can build nests because that's just nasty to the max. Late pumpkin uh, plant growing around here. I'm not sure if it will get any fruit because we're going into the the dry season. But if the dry season will be a bit wet, then we might have some late pumpkins. Let's see. Mangoes are starting to flower, same like last year. Only question is if they will get moldy again. If the mold will attack the flowers and the, all the fruit will fall down and, and everything will die. And then we will not get any fruits the same like last year. Yeah, that's the mango garden. We have 200 plus trees. So and as you can see there are flowers popping up like this. Also like here. And it's nice that they're not coming all at the same time, so the fruit will also... We will, we will, if we have mangoes, we will have one to two months of mangoes that we cannot eat, that we need to freeze. And we will just have a mango feast for a very long time. I cut all the bean plants because they were either dying or they were just annoying. And there was a lot of... there were a lot of weeds growing around. And we just need to take down all the beans and dry them and so they're ready for the next season. And we um, started to cut many of the inside branches that are dying because of the, not the powder post beetles, but the other beetles. The mango stem borers. Mango stem borers. They are just totally evil. Pure evilness. I wish we had more birds, natural predators. And we have a lot of birds, but... If we free up, if we clear some of the branches, the birds will also easier, will be able to, to find these powder post beetles because powder post beetles or worms, when they are inside, eating the insides 
of the trees, the, the stem of the tree, like killing it completely, or at least the branches. <clears throat> so we're just cutting down the branches that are dying. I don't know if you can see, but there's on the ground, and here is, but it's like step by step going through all the trees. We already managed a lot, but as you can see behind me, if there are like some gr uh, gr brown leaves, that means that they are dying and there probably is a powder puss beetle uh, inside somewhere. And we need to cut uh, a very nice place so we can just take it away. Either <clears throat> we can turn the branches into charcoal or we can compost them. So these are the two good solutions for us. I know some areas struggle getting the flowers of the mangoes, but we, we never struggle to get the flowers because when the dry season kicks in, these flowers just pop out completely automatically. The big difference is that our dry season has become wetter. And when the dry season is wet and there's not enough air circulation around, then these flowers and fruits can catch mold. And when they get moldy, they just die because there will be a lot of um, insects going and just destroying everything. So moldy flowers are not cool. You can see the rest of the beans are still hanging. I need to clear all of this to avoid mold or any other disease. And in the inside there's a powder post beetle doing something. So still cut some of the branches away to clear up the air and stuff like that. Everybody likes air circulation, including humans. Whoa. Except the mango stem borers, they don't like air circulation. They just love to be inside a branch, completely slimy in their own mucus, their own, their own feces. It's disgusting. It smells really bad. The normal bananas and the red cavendish are, are giving quite some fruit right now. Another red cavendish? It's great. Lex Gardening Project is giving some greens too, so that's nice. Also there are some tomato plants coming up, super cool. Papayas are also nice currently. Still some chilies, but not too many. And also the lime season is not so great anymore. Hello Mimi. Hello Hima. There's still some passion fruits left, passion fruit are hanging around. Oh. But uh, these are the last ones. I think they will be gone in a couple of weeks. Normally we just pick them up from the ground. We still have pepper, black pepper, or when it's fresh it's green. Rose apples are flowering too. And you can see here a lot of black ants and rose apples, young ones. And what we happens here is that the worms eat them if we don't bag them.